Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners I welcome you back to our course of microeconomics and its applications Today we will be doing the fourth lecture of your unit 2 wherein we are talking about the consumer behavior. I am Dr. Aparna Samudra, the course coordinator as well as the presenter of this lecture. So learners, let us first of all have a look at that what are going to be our learning objectives from today's lecture. First thing we will understand today is the concept of budget line. Thereafter, we will be deriving the consumer equilibrium using the indifference curve approach. And then we will see that what happens to the consumer equilibrium when there is a change in income of the consumer. And from this, we will derive what is called as angel's curve. So let us start with today's lecture. First of all, let me just uh, do a small recap of what we have been discussing in this particular unit. As I just mentioned that we are talking about the consumer behavior wherein we are trying to understand that how a consumer decides that what goods he has to buy, how much of those goods he has to buy so that his utility is maximized. We have already understood the cardinal approach. And right now, from lecture 3, we have been doing the ordinal approach, which is the indifference curve approach. In the previous lecture of 3, we have lecture 3, we had talked about the indifference curves. What were indifference curve learners? Indifference curve, we had said, it's a graphical representation of the combination of two goods, which give the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. So, if a consumer is talking about one particular indifference curve, all the combination of two goods, let us say those two goods are X and Y, both of the combination of all types of combinations of X and Y will give the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. We have already talked about the various properties of indifference curve because of which the indifference curve is downward sloping and it is convex to the origin. We had also discussed that a higher indifference curve shows a higher level of satisfaction. So that is where we had uh, ended our lecture 3. Today we will be taking further the same concept of your ordinal approach and we will be understanding that what do you mean by a price line or what is a budget line. What is a budget line? Budget line basically is showing you the combination of the two goods which a consumer can buy spending the given money income which he has at the two given prices of those two goods. That is, if he is buying two goods X and Y with his given money income and with the given price of X and price of Y, how much of these two goods he can purchase? That is represented in your budget line. So, all the combinations of X and Y which this consumer can afford with his given money income are represented on the budget line. Now, why is it important to have budget line learners? Just a quick thought. Why is it important that we have budget line? It is important that we understand the budget line because the money income is the ability, it is what gives the consumer the ability to buy. So, income which is you no know, determining factor of his ability to buy is accounted for in this budget line. Similarly, the price of the goods in question are equally important because ultimately how much is the price of the goods will be talking about whether the consumer will be able to afford it, whether he will be willing to buy it or not. Therefore, budget line is an important concept when we talk about the deriving the consumer's equilibrium because if we know that what is the income of the consumer and if the prices of those two goods which he is buying is given to us from the market, 
through the budget line by drawing the budget line we will be able to know that what are the different combinations of these two goods which this consumer can buy with his given money income so let us see that how does a budget line look like now as you can see on your screens we have taken two goods x and y we are measuring the units of good x on the x axis and unit of good y on the y axis now uh, let us assume that the price of x and y are given to you as well as the income is given to you these are the three things which we may be needing whenever we want to draw a budget line so let us say that the price of x is 2 rupees price of y is 1 rupee and the money income or the budget of the consumer is 30 rupees now what do i have to do we have to find that what are the various combinations of x and y which this consumer can purchase with his given money income of 30 rupees so i have made a hypothetical uh, table from this from the price of x price of y and the budget which has been given to you for example i am saying let us say he is not buying any unit of good x he is buying zero unit of x means he is completely spending his income on good y so how much of good y he can buy what is the price of y 1 rupee this means he can buy 30 units of good y so we say this is let us say be a point on the budget line as a so this point a on the red line which we have made which we have named as the budget line shows that this is one combination of x and y which this consumer can afford to buy with his money income that is he is not buying any unit of x he is only buying 30 units of y he is completely spending his income on buying only y then we see another point b b means we are saying a situation where he is buying 5 units of x that is 5 is the unit and what is the price of x 2 so what is the expenditure he is making on x 5 into 2 right plus he is making some expenditure on y as well what is the price of y 1 rupee so he if he buys 20 units of y and if he buy 5 units of x he is completely spending his money income of 30 rupees so we get another point b similarly another combination of x and y is given at point c and one more combination i have taken is where he is only buying x and he is not buying anything of y so when we join these points the line that we are getting is called as the budget line so mathematically if you want to know that what is the equation of the budget line we say it is you can note it down if you want to the equation of the budget line is the money income whatever the budget is it is equal to price of x multiplied by the quantity of x plus price of y multiplied by the quantity of y i am repeating the equation of the budget line is m if it is your money income is equal to px into x plus py into y where m is your budget or your in money income px and py are the prices of x and y or any two goods which the consumer is buying x is the units of commodity x and y is the units of commodity y so the budget line equation is m is equal to px into x plus py into y that is that particular situation budget line will tell you that with the given money income with the given prices of x and y how much of x and y the consumer can buy all the points which are lying on the budget line are the points which the consumer can afford with this particular budget or the money income for example in our case the money income of the consumer is 30 rupees so there will be in, in number of points or in in finite points on this particular budget line but each point will satisfy the equation which we have just said that is m is equal to px into x plus py into y that is all the point on the budget line shows that the consumer can buy the all these particular combinations of x and y from his money income any point which is lying to the right of your budget line to the right of the budget line to 
outward to the budget line are those points or those combination of x and y which the consumer cannot afford to buy with the particular money income in hand whereas any point which is lying to the left of this budget line or inside the budget line where you can see the cursor right now these are all the points which if consumer settles for any of the combination in the left of the budget line means he is not being rational why because he has greater money income but he is spending less of it so what we say is that if a consumer is lying on the budget line means these are all the combinations of the two goods which he is buying you can take any example i've just taken x and y you can take it apples and oranges you can take tea biscuit whatever you want to take we are just saying that all the points on the budget line show the various combination of two goods which the consumer can buy by exhaust with the given money income and the prices of the two goods so that is what we call as a budget line now as we are saying that budget line is basically talking about that how much you can buy with your given money income what happens if there is an increase in money income what will happen this means that if the prices let us assume with the same example continue with the same example which we had taken let us say the price of x and y is 2 and 1 rupee but now your money income has increased from 30 to 40 earlier your money income was 30 now it has gone up to 40 rupees what will happen this means that now the consumer with the same prices of x and y can buy more of it right because his money income has increased he has got greater money in his pocket he has got a greater ability to pay so because of this increase in money income we will see that your budget line will shift outside you see this arrow we are moving from this blue line blue budget line to an orange budget line this means because of his money income the budget line has shifted to the right if there is a decrease in money income the budget line will shift inside so a greater money income an increase in income would mean increase in the ability to buy therefore the budget line will shift rightward so as you can see in this particular diagram which i have given earlier uh, with the money income of 30 rupees this consumer was let us say at point m where he was buying 16 units of y and 7 units of x now his money income or his budget has gone up by 10 rupees now he is he has a budget of 40 rupees so prices of x and y have not changed his money income has changed because of which he has got a greater ability to buy therefore what we see is that your budget line shifts to the right word and this consumer goes to a new point let us say n where he is buying 10 units of x and 20 units of y or in other words with an increase in money income he is able to buy more of both the goods he is buying more of x as well as more of y so because of an increase in income we will see a rightward shift in the budget line and vice versa if there is a decrease in income the budget line will shift inside so that is the effect of increase in income on the budget line now coming to our second objective of this particular lecture to find the optimum consumption point for the consumer that is we need to determine that what should he buy now in order to do that we will be what we will be doing is we will be taking the help of your indifference map we have done this indifference map what is an indifference map indifference map is you see many indifference curves on the same graph and each uh, particular indifference curve shows one level of satisfaction but various combinations of the two goods so as you see in this particular graph we have drawn five indifference curves which has the highest level of satisfaction 
I5 has the highest level of satisfaction because it is the highest indifference curve. So what we do in order to find the optimum combination? See, this is uh, every consumer would like to go to the highest indifference curve. But he has a budget constraint with him. There is a constraint with respect to the money income. There is a constraint with respect to the prices of the goods that he is buying. So we have to determine that given this particular constraint, what is that particular point or what is that particular combination of the two goods which will give the maximum satisfaction to the consumer keeping in mind the income and the prices of the goods. So for that what we have done is as you can see here this is an indifference map and we have put a budget line on this. So this orange is a budget line we have already seen what is a budget line. So a consumer equilibrium or the optimum combination is at a point where we find that the consumer's equilibrium, your indifference curve, highest possible indifference curve becomes tangent to the budget line. That is the point of your consumer equilibrium. Now let us see this as we have just seen that we have imposed these are the five types of indifference curves. This is an indifference map with five indifference curves. This orange is your budget line. This budget line is meeting your uh, indifference curve at point R, S, T, U, V. We have marked this point purposely. Why? Because uh, we want to know what is our objective. Our objective is to understand that how much of X and Y this consumer should buy so that his rational or his utility is maximized. One thing we have already known that all the points on the budget line are the points which this consumer can afford. This means that R, S, T, U, V are all the combinations of X and Y which this consumer can afford to buy. Okay, these are also the points which are lying on the indifference curves. This means utility is of course there, but is R, S, T, U, V from these which is the point? Which or what combination of X and Y should this consumer buy? That is the point if you want to determine that we say it is that point the consumer equilibrium is at that point where the budget line becomes tangent to your indifference curve. Tangent means the slope of the budget line becomes equal to the slope of the indifference curve. So in this particular situation, that tangency comes at point T. Okay, so we will say the consumer equilibrium is achieved at point T where he should be buying X1 of unit X of a good X and buy one of good Y. My learners just pay attention that even though in this indifference map we had I4 and I5 also as our indifference curves but we are not marking any point on I4 and I5. Why is it so? This happens because these two indifference curves are unattainable for me with the given budget because this budget line is below these indifference curves I4 and I5. So even though I wish to maybe get a higher level of satisfaction by reaching I4 and I5, but with the given money income, with the given prices of X and Y, I am these, this particular I4 and I5 are unattainable to me. So we are not marking any point on I4 and I5. But if you have a look at I1, I2 and I3, they are intersecting or they are touching this budget line somewhere or the other. Just have a look at point R. R point is lying on the budget line as well as R point is lying on your indifference curve I1. Should I, stop, should I take R as my equilibrium point? No. Why? Because if you buy R, if you stop at R, you are stopping at a lower level of satisfaction. 
See, I1 is the lowest indifference curve. I2 is gives you a greater level of satisfaction. So, of course, you will not be considering any point which is lying on I1, even though I1 is touching your budget line at R and V. So, a consumer, if he is rational, we will not consider R and V as the equilibrium points because if he does that, he is sacrificing his utility. He is not being rational. Similar cases with I2, which is also touching your budget line at point S and at point U. But of course, it is lower than your I3 indifference curve. This means I2 shows a lower level of satisfaction compared to I3. Let us come to this point T. Now, I3 is touching your indifference, sorry, your budget line at point T. After I3, any indifference curve if you have will be unattainable right now. As we have just seen, I4 and I5 are unattainable. So, T is the equilibrium point where this consumer will derive the maximum satisfaction by consuming X1 and Y1. So, what is the consumer equilibrium? We say consumer equilibrium is at the point where the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line or where the indifference curve and the budget line become tangent to each other. Which is at that point? Tangent means this slope becomes the same. See, this the slope is becoming the same here. They are intersect, they are touching each other. Okay, they are not cutting each other, they are touching each other. So, that is called as your tangency of the indifference curve. So, as I just told you, at the tangency point, you will see your slope of indifference curve become equal to the slope of the budget line. That is MRS, which is slope of the indifference curve, is equal to the budget line, slope of the budget line. Now, let us uh, see that what happens to the consumer equilibrium when there is a change in income. We have just seen that a change in income means your, uh, if there is an increase in income, budget line will shift outside. If there is a decrease in income, budget line will shift inside. So, every change in income will bring a change in your budget line. Now, this let us say initially the budget line is B1. It is tangent at this point. And this I1 is your indifference curve. So, this becomes your consumer equilibrium. Okay. Now, there is an increase in income. Budget line will shift parallelly outside. It goes to B2. Now, when your budget line shifts outside, you get to have a greater level of satisfaction at a new indifference curve I2. Because I2 is, at a, is higher than I1. So, you get to a new equilibrium point where I2 is tangent to B2. Again, if there is an increase in money income, we will see subsequently all this happening. You will see many different points. All these dots that you are seeing, these orange and red dot, they are indicating the equilibrium of the consumer with different money incomes and your different level of satisfactions given by your indifference curves. Okay, so whenever your income is changing, we will see that the consumer equilibrium will change. When we join all these points, which points? These points which are showing respective equilibriums with the increased income and your indifference curves, these points when we join, this curve that we get is called as your income consumption curve. That is, how does income and consumption relate to each other at different levels of income? What is my consumption of the goods which I am buying? And I, whenever you are on this income consumption curve, it indicates that the consumer is in equilibrium. So, when we join the equilibrium points at different levels of income, what the curve that we get is called as your income consumption curve. Okay. Now, once we have understood that what is an income consumption curve, let us derive an angles curve from income consumption curve. 
for this i have taken example of two goods let us say uh, we are take, taking two goods bread and cds okay now bread we are measuring on your y axis and cds we are measuring on the x axis if you see the first uh, panel the top panel or the top graph if you see what do you see here is that b1 b2 b3 are what they are all the budget lines b3 means the highest money income b2 is lower than that and b1 is the lowest so if there would have been an increase in income from b1 it went to b2 the line shifted to b2 and then it shifted to b3 for each of these um, new budget lines we have a point of tangency with a new indifference curve and that equilibrium we are deriving let us say from b1 and a1 the point is a b2 i2 is at b and i uh, b3 and i3 is at c so a b c are the equilibrium points of the consumer where the individual budget line is getting tangent to an indifference curve we join these points and the curve that we get we have already seen is called as your income consumption curve but income consumption curve which we are seeing is talking about it is what is this point highlighting this point is telling you that you are buying so q q b1 units of bread and q c d1 units of cds similarly b is telling you the combination of bread and cds c is also telling you the combination of bread and cds but if i want to know that at every different level of income how much of only if i am comparing the quantities of cds that at different levels of income how much of cds do i purchase for that we are taking this a b c points on the panel which is given below on the graph which is given just below to it and here you see the difference that here in the y axis we have now taken the money income whereas on the x axis we are still counting or measuring your quantity of cds so instead of having another good on y axis we have taken income so it is telling you that the at income level of y1 we are buying q c d1 of cds at y2 you are buying qcd2 at y3 you are buying qcd3 what is it showing it is showing as your money income is rising we are buying or this consumer is buying more of your cds okay when we join this point the curve that we get is called as your angles curve okay many call it as angles curve also so this curve basically is telling you that at different level of income levels how much of a good a consumer is buying okay whereas income consumption curve was telling you the various quantities of two goods which a consumer was buying when with an increase in money income his equilibrium changes okay so an income consumption curve when written from the point of view of income and the quantity of a particular good at various levels of income that is called as your angles curve or angels curve okay so learners what all we have learned today we have seen that the budget line shows the various combinations of the quantities of two goods which a consumer can buy with the given money income and the prices of these two goods then we have seen that how do we get the consumer equilibrium we say consumer equilibrium is achieved at the point of tangency between what between the budget line and the highest possible indifference curve thereafter we have said we have derived the income consumption curve which were which was found to be the locus of various equilibrium price arising because of shift in the budget line that is as in as the budget line shifts due to a change in income what happens to the new equilibrium when we join all those equilibrium points the curve that we get is called as your income consumption curve and from your income consumption curve we derive your angles curve so learner i hope you enjoyed this lecture uh, the next lecture we will be talking about the impact of change in prices on the consumer equilibrium 
Why is it important? Because budget line is taking three things into con two things into consideration. One is the income of the consumer, and other is the prices of the two goods. In this lecture, we have seen that how change in income brings a change in the equilibrium. The subsequent lecture that we will be doing, we will be seeing that how change in the prices of goods brings a change in the consumer equilibrium. So till then. Have a nice time and happy learning.